Hi guys, this is Curly with another pen review and today I have something very interesting for you which is a review of the Parker 51 and uh, of course it is 2021 so this review of the Parker 51 is not a review of the vintage model but of the not modern reintroduction of the Parker 51. <clears throat> Before we get this one kicked off I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to my friends at La Couronne du Comte over there in the Netherlands for providing this pen right here for review so that I can bring this video to you. As said, let's get it kicked off. This is a review of the Parker 51. The Parker 51, an iconic pen, uh, probably the most iconic fountain pen out there a part of the from the lamy safari which is uh, famous in a in a different way let me put it like this <clears throat> but the parker 51 is a pen <clears throat> that has been launched by parker in the 1940s uh, and then it ran out of production at some point and now in 2021 parker has reintroduced this iconic pen that has written pen history so to speak with a couple of differences this is not a comparative review of the new modern parker 51 and the old parker 51 because i do not have a vintage model right here but i will look at this pen right here in its own regard the parker 51 does come in a box says Parker 51 right here, premium or deluxe, which is also known uh, for the uh, gold nib version. There is a non-premium or non-deluxe version, which then has like a steel nib. This right here has like a 18K gold nib. It's the one with the gold trim. It's the fountain pen. And it is a fine nib that this pen comes with right here. Let's open it up. Um, there slides out there. Parker cardboard box saying Parker since 1888 as said the Parker 51 has been introduced I do think in 1940 something 41 or so you open the box and uh, in there was the pen and uh, <clears throat> you get a converter with the pen saying Parker Parker a filling system is a proprietary one has like a slightly a wider opening gap than the standard international convert uh, cartridges so the pen uh, did came with a black and blue cartridge and also with a converter but then you know that is it which i to be honest find uh astonishing disappointing uh, i don't know uh, this is a super iconic fountain pen ha decades of history went out of production get reintroduced you would expect lots of bells and whistles and all of that but nothing no brochure about the history i can't read anything about you know where the pain came came from and where it has gone to and and why it's back right now nothing like that uh i don't know uh, every other fountain pen at least comes with a booklet of filling instructions such an iconic fountain pen comes with literally nothing i'm not sure but let's look at the writing implement in itself. Of course, it is the recognizable Parker 51. Very, very beautiful. I don't know why, but it does remind me of a 1950s or 1960s American car. I do love this like rounded shape right here it looks just so 50s so 60s it just looks so super cool timeless it's old school but modern at the same time let's look at the pen as said this one here has a is the uh, deluxe or premium version so uh, has a gold nib um, and uh, all the pens that have a gold nib uh, or are like a premium version do have this uh striated or guilloche patterned cap which is gold here very beautiful you have a uh, finial right here with a bit of a dome 
uh, is pretty much rem rem reminiscent of these dual um, finials that the old vintage Parkers had. It has some vent holes or something like that right here. I was in the beginning worried that air will get in here and uh, I was just blowing into the cap. Um, indeed, air is blowing through those holes. But it does not make the nip dry, dry out. I've had that pen down and capped for probably two weeks at some point, And I opened it up and just wrote right away, which is great. Um, you don't have this uh, clip here, this very iconic Parker clip. Works very well, kind of springy. It feels kind of cheapish. I must say it doesn't feel very solid. I mean, it will work, right? And it like, if you won't fumble around with it all the time and bend it upwards and stuff like that, it won't really break, but it does not necessarily feel like a solid clip uh, of a pen of that price range. And I'll discuss price of this pen uh, at the end of the review. You don't have this like super cool gold cap, striated or guilloche pattern. I, looks very, very nice. I like it a lot. Uh, Probably like half of the weight of the pen or more. It's very hefty. It's it's nice, beautiful. I, I do like it a lot. Cap band saying Parker, France, Q3. Don't ask me why. And then, well, you do have this uh, beautiful, high glossy piano black barrel that I do find extremely beautiful. The pen then unscrews with one, one and a quarter of turns. Uh, almost exactly one turn, which I do find absolutely fantastic because it does make the pen uh, a very quick note taker, which is great. Exposes this uh, iconic nib design. It is a hooded nib. Now I have not uh, disassembled that pen, but as you can see right here, and uh, that's something that I've just read about the pen. I'm not sure about it myself, but uh, I, I do think it might be true. This is not like a true, this is not a true hooded nib. It's like not a separate nib design that has been made for that pen. But if you'd actually take that nib out somehow, I do think that it would be just like a regular gold nib that probably is like large like that, that has just been hidden under that hood here. Uh, probably a little bit like the Aurora, uh, what is it called, the Aurora Duo card or something like that. It does remind me pretty much about the Aurora Duo card nib design because you do see like that slight gap between nib and hood right here so this is not uh it's not integrated into the pen in the same way that the old parker 51 was i do believe or like if you look at the lamy uh, 2000 for instance the nib really is uh, sits tightly snugly is sort of like integrated into the pen body there's now wiggle room in between nib and uh, housing or section which uh, you do see right here uh, it's a gold nib, as I said, 18 karat gold nib, says F for fine. Down here, excuse me, you do have a gold center band right here. Um, pen unscrews. Metal in here, so um, you cannot eyedropper fill that pen in case you would want that. And uh, then, <clears throat> as I said, you have these uh, Parker proprietary cartridges. Right here, it comes as as you have seen also with a converter, and I have filled it with Pilot Iroshizuku Shin Kai. All that feels very nice, very well. The pen itself, uh, as said, I think half of the pen's weight is in the cap. Feels very, very lightweight, uh, almost too lightweight for me. The pen has no weight of its own. 
of course it does have a weight of its own but it, it feels as if it has no weight of its own it's very very lightweight um, that's why it's also very hard to, to talk about uh, balance or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's not particularly unbalanced, but uh, I'm not sure if it has a balance at all because it literally just weighs nothing at all. I do find the plastic to look very nice. Um, unfortunately, it does feel kind of cheapish. It, it, it by no means does it feel as high quality as a Lamy 2000 feels that also has more heft to it it just you know it, it doesn't look cheap it's all right it looks great i like the black i like the piano uh, lacquer or the piano the piano black is beautiful and and it writes nicely as you will see in the writing sample but it just uh, it just feels a bit strange in the hand you could now post this pen um it makes it a little bit back heavy because the cap is that heavy um, and also the cap has no felt linen or anything like that inside it is just like has metal threads on here and it's a highly polished body so i wouldn't want to post the pen all that often because i do think i would be kind of worried to scratch this uh, very very glossy uh, pen body right here and if you're not 100% into wabi sabi or if you at some point might want to sell the pen or something like that um, then uh, it's probably not a good idea to to post that pen having that said let's do a writing sample You see, the pen was uncapped for quite a while, but it almost did not dry up, just a little bit. Excellent writing here. Well, so there was some writing with that Parker 51. To sum it up, the pen has a fine nib. It is a very true to the size Western fine nib. No complaints there. The pen does write very, very nicely, very, very smoothly. It's a fantastic writing gold nib. It does provide a little bit of feedback, like pencilish feedback that lets you know that you're writing. So you'll feel that feedback from the page, which is beautiful. Aside from that, there is no line variation whatsoever. This is a very stiff nib. It's pretty much a nail. To be honest, I don't feel like I'm writing with a with a gold nib. There's many steel nibs that uh, write as good as that one does. So yeah, you get an okay-ish great writing experience but it's not a it's not a gold worthy spectacular writing experience if you write with the Lamy 2000 for instance the writing experience is much smoother much more pronounced like goldish like you just feel more quality than with this nib here which is kind of mad I mean I, I don't know it's uh th there's one other thing that I wanted to point out that I'm kind of worried about for this with this pen in the long run and this is like uh, the plastic threads here these are not very substantial plastic threads they are kind of filigran fine and then there's metal threads here in the cap um i'm not sure if those threads will wear out in the long run I do not know. I've I've not had that pen obviously since ten years because it just came out. But there is a potential worry that this uh, this pen, that these threads, might wear out. Let's do a quick size comparison in the end to my uh, standard size reference pen, which is the Lamy Two Thousand, uh, the Lamy Safari, and you do see right here that they are almost the same in length when capped, uh, when uncapped. The Parker 51 is 
quite a bit shorter and uh, when posted, which uh, as said before, I would only do very carefully and I would not post the Lamy Safari anyway at all, but that is the picture that you get. Let's discuss price in the end. Uh, the Park of 51 uh, goes for 265 euro at La Couronne du Comte on their online shop, which I do think is an, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's an okay price. It's not inexpensive, but it's also not outrageous. Uh, if you compare it, for instance, to other cartridge converter filled gold nipped fountain pens, such as the Graf von Faber Castell Giosch, which retails for like 300 plus euros or a Sailor Pro Gear, which is 295. That's even more expensive than this uh, Parker 51 that retails for 265. But of course, you can also get a Lamy 2000, which is even piston filled. I know it's like a very competitive pricing. That's a lot less. So, hey, yeah, I mean, the pen is priced somewhere smack in the middle. It's all right. But yeah, I think overall, it's a good writing pen. Uh, it's a great looking pen. The quality is all right, but there's just these few things that I do find kind of confusing, which is the lack of any historical information that comes with the pen. The extreme light weight, again, if that doesn't disturb you, fantastic. Maybe you do like uh, lightweight pens. As I said, it's kind of comfortable, writes very nice, but uh, this half-baked uh, hooded nib design, let me call it like that. Uh, I, I'm not sure about that. The kind of unspectacularly writing nib is not a bad writing nib. It, it writes very, very well, as said. It's just kind of unspectacular. And then the concerns that I do have with the threading, um, they're... I don't know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it as of now. It's just a concern. I can't confirm that something will ever go wrong with it. But hey, th that's that. So, I mean, as you see, I'm going a little bit forth and back. I have mixed feelings about that pen. Overall, as said, it's not a bad pen. Uh, it's, a, it's a great writer. It looks good. The price is okay. But for the reasons mentioned, I do have somewhat mixed feelings about it. That's that with this review. Once more, thanks to my friends at La Couronne du Comte over there in the Netherlands for providing this pen for review. I hope that review was helpful to you and I'll see you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.